You're listening to Don't Miss This on Paris Underground Radio. For more great content, including bonus videos of events in and around Paris, please join us on Patreon. Hello, and welcome to the season four premiere of Don't Miss This, your weekly roundup of the best of what's happening in Paris this week. I'm your host, Jennifer Garrity, the creator and founder of the Paris Underground Radio Podcast Network featuring podcasts on a wide range of topics that come out six days a week and are made for people just like you. I want to give a special thank you to the Patreons who followed along during the break between seasons with exclusive weekly Don't Miss This episodes and bonus videos of Chateaus in the Loire. If you're interested in seeing what you missed, head to patreon.com slash Paris Underground Radio for more information. We'll begin this week with Love Letters to Paris and end it with purple rain and colorful foam on La Nuit Blanche. In between, you'll marvel at never-before-seen jewels, wander into artists' open doors, and taste the most delectable kimchi. Discover how women created modern-day Paris, how consciousness can save the planet, and so much more. This week's edition of Don't Miss This covers the week of Sunday, September 25th through Saturday, October 2nd, 2022. Let's start with a love letter to Paris. Paris et nulle part ailleurs, or Paris and nowhere else. This exhibit, beginning on Tuesday, September 27th, at the Musée de l'Histoire de l'Immigration, focuses on foreign artists who made their homes in Paris from 1945 to 1972. This post-war period saw a return to hope and the emergence of new artistic visions, particularly with abstract, portraiture, and kinetic art. As you likely know, artists from all over the world flocked to Paris in the first half of the 20th century, making it the world capital of the arts and the home of the avant-garde. Of the 15,000 artists active in Paris at that time, 60 to 65 percent of them were foreigners. Why did they come? How did Paris change them and their work? Paris et nulle part ailleurs focuses on 24 artists of various origin, European, African, Latin American, Asian, and North American, with around 100 pieces from private and public collections, and is organized into four themes, going into exile, blending French culture with the culture of origin, reacting to the strangeness of the new world, and building a universal language without borders. Paris et nulle part ailleurs, 24 artistes étrangers à Paris, de 1945 à 1972, will be at the Musée de l'Histoire de l'Immigration from Tuesday, September 27th through Sunday, January 22nd, 2023. More information can be found at l'histoire-immigration.fr. That's H-I-S-T-O-I-R-E dash I-M-M-I-G-R-A-T-I-O-N dot F-R. <laughs> Tuesday, September 27th is Molière's 400th birthday, and a legacy like his should certainly be celebrated. Never fear! The National Library of France is organizing an exhibit in the heart of the Paris Opera Library to showcase how music is featured in Molière's work, Molière en musique. Nearly half of all Molière's plays feature music, and this exhibit, in conjunction with the Comédie Française, explores the relationship of composers and choreographers with their actors, how Molière inspired the birth of French opera, the Comédie Ballet, and how renewed interest in Baroque music has recently brought Molière's original scores back to the forefront. Molière en musique will be at the Bibliothèque Musée de l'Opéra from Tuesday, September 27th through January 15th, 2023. And more information, including ticketing, can be found at opéra de paris.fr. That's o p e r a d e p a r i s dot f r. A kiss on the hand may be quite continental, but the first retrospective of La Maison de Joaillerie, Fred, is coming to the Palais de Tokyo beginning on Wednesday, September 28th. For the first time, you can admire the treasures and precious stones from the famous Fred brand during an immersive journey retracing its history. 
As you wander through 12 linked exhibition rooms, you'll get to know the life and personality of the legend behind the brand, Fred Samuel, and discover more than 85 years of creative audacity. So, what can you see? Why, more than 450 jewels and iconic accessories, unique drawings and archival documents, photographs, videos, and exclusive testimonials, as well as the Soleil d'Or, the famous fancy yellow emerald-cut diamond of more than 100 carats. The first retrospective of La Maison de Joaillerie, Fred, will be at the Palais de Tokyo from Wednesday, September 28th through October 24th. This exhibit is free to attend, but reservations are required. For more information, please visit palaisdetokyo.com. That's P-A-L-A-I-S-D-E-T-O-K-Y-O dot com. One of the City of Paris's stated goals this year, in addition to promoting the Olympics that are two years away, is to explore the role of women in the shaping of France's history and culture. And a new exhibit at the Carnavalet Museum hits this nail right on the head. Parisienne Citoyenne, which translates clunkily as female Parisian citizens. This new exhibit will focus on the history of feminism in Paris and of women's emancipation through her most emblematic heroines, both known and unnamed. From the French Revolution to the law on parity, you'll follow in the footsteps of women like Olympe de Gouges, Marguerite Durand, and Giselle Halimi, but also countless communards, suffragettes, pacifists, resistance fighters, female politicians, trade unionists, committed artists and intellectuals, striking workers, groups of immigrant women, and other historical feminist activists. And what will you actually see? Well, you'll find a wide variety of paintings, sculptures, photographs, films, videos, posters, banners, badges, newspapers, militant and police archives, records, clothing, manuscripts, books, and other more unusual items, such as a lock of Marguerite Durand's hair, or suffragist soaps. Parisienne Citoyenne will be at the Musée Carnavalet from Wednesday, September 28th through January 29th, 2023. The exhibit is free to attend, and more information can be found at carnavalet.paris.fr. That's C-A-R-N-A-V-A-L-E-T dot P-A-R-I-S dot F-R. If this tune brings back a sense of childhood glee, you may want to visit the Press Start Festival beginning on Wednesday, September 28th at the Pompidou Center because this year's theme is the music of video games. This free six-day festival for video game enthusiasts will combine conferences, workshops, demonstrations, concerts, and, of course, video games. There will be roundtable discussions with professionals and gamers who will share their passion for video game music and its facets. You'll learn from music journalists, writers, and publishers about how in-game sounds are created and what some industry challenges can be. What influence does music have on the player? There will be a conference game where you can discover firsthand the intersections between jazz and video games. The No Limit Orchestra will perform. And, of course, you can test independent, experimental, and mainstream games, alone or with a team, on PC or on console. The Press Start Festival will be at the BPI in the Centre Pompidou from Wednesday, September 28th through Monday, October 3rd, and is free to attend. More information can be found at centrepompidou.fr. That's C-E-N-T-R-E-P-O-M-P-I-D-O-U dot F-R. Let me ask you a question. How much do you know about Slovenia? They say that one of the best ways to get to know a culture is through its art. And beginning on Thursday, September 29th, you can partake in the first Slovenian film festival in Les Sept Parisien Cinema. This film festival will include five feature films and four short films, and each film will be screened in the presence of the cast or the production team. This first edition of the film festival is being sponsored by French actor Stanislas Merhar. The Slovenian Film Festival will be held in Les Sept Parnasiens Cinema from September 29th through October 2nd. 
Full price tickets are 11 euros, but there are discounts for those under 27 or over 65. More information, including the full lineup, can be found at parnasien.com. That's P-A-R-N-A-S-S-I-E-N-S dot com. More cinema, you say? Well... From La Boom to Braveheart, French actress Sophie Marceau has blessed our silver screens. And now a new retrospective in her honor, Sauvage de Raison, or Wild with Reason, comes to the Cinémathèque. With screenings, conversations, and conferences, you can take a deeper look at the body of work of this accomplished actress. For two weeks, you can watch all of Sophie's most iconic films. And Sophie herself will even be on hand for the opening night screening of Une Femme de Notre Temps, her latest film, alongside its director Jean-Paul Siverac. Sauvage de Raison, the retrospective dedicated to Sophie Marceau, will be at the Cinémathèque Française from Thursday, September 29th through October 13th. And more information, including programming, can be found at cinematheque.fr. That's C I N E. M-A-T-H-E-Q-U-E dot F-R. If you're nosy, I mean curious, like me, the Porte Ouverte in Menimontant may end up being one of your favorite events of the rentrée. From Thursday, September 29th through Sunday, October 2nd, you can stroll through the streets of Menimontant and wander in and out of various workshops and home studios to browse the art being created in this neighborhood. Meet painters, sculptors, photographers, engravers, ceramists, designers, visual artists, and videographers, around a hundred in total, who will open their studios free of charge for four days in 45 different exhibition locations. The Porte Ouverte will be held in Menimontant from Thursday, September 29th, through Sunday, October 2nd, from 2 to 8 p.m. and until 9 p.m. on the 29th, and is free to attend. You can pick up a map of the route at the Galerie Mélin-Luit, or consult it online and download it at ateliersdemenimontant.org. That's A-T-E-L-I-E-R-S-D-E-M-E-N-I-L-M-O-N-T-A-N-T Dot org. After a festival blending the artistic and subconscious, how would you like one that's a little more conscious? Beginning on Friday, September 30th, the Conscious Festival returns to ground control for its second edition. The idea behind the festival is to make the general public aware of a more collective, circular, and conscious approach to lifestyle consumption and sustainable practices. For three days, you'll find debates, conferences, events, and concerts on spirituality and ecological transitions in the realms of lifestyle, fashion, food, beauty, travel, and finance. It's also an opportunity to reflect on our democracies, the creation of stories, and our personal ecological impact. The Conscious Festival will be at ground control from Friday, September 30th through Sunday, October 2nd, and is free to attend. More information can be found at theconsciousfestival.com. Do you have room for yet one more festival before we head into the White Night? The Korean Expo, formerly known as the Kimchi Festival, returns to Paris on Saturday, October 1st. For one weekend, This cultural and culinary event will offer a unique opportunity to discover Korea through its culture, gastronomy, music, including K-pop, dance, art, sports, and beauty. You'll even find a cooking competition centered around kimchi with Le Cordon Bleu Paris and the London Institute. Experience Korean culture in Paris through workshops on things like taekwondo, confections, and traditional dance. Please note that these workshops are free to attend, but require registration. The Korean Expo will be held on October 1st and 2nd from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the Parvis de la Marie in the 15th arrondissement and is free to attend. For more information and to register for the workshops, please visit marie 
That's M A I R I E 15.paris. Are you searching for spiritual guidance? The Heart of You podcast is an exploration into your soul through intuition, spirituality, divination, and unconditional love. Host Annette Lu is a spiritual guidance coach, intuitive, Akashic, and tarot reader who discusses practical ways to integrate spiritual growth into your everyday life. Listen now to The Heart of You on parisundergroundradio.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll be right back with Don't Miss This after a word from our sponsors. And now, back to Don't Miss This. And now, the culmination of the week. Everyone's favorite all-nighter, La Nuit Blanche. This year's Nuit Blanche will be held on Saturday, October 1st, from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., and will showcase contemporary creation in the public space, in prestigious, little-known, or usually inaccessible locations. And like every year, the event is free and open to all. This year's theme is Le Jardin des Delices, or The Garden of Earthly Delights, inspired by the work of Dutch painter Hieronymus Bosch. Says artistic director Kitty Hart, quote, I see Paris as a large, exuberant garden, invested with unusual scenes, populated by rare forms and crossed by intriguing creatures. A curious eye opens on Paris and allows us to once again admire her historic heart and rediscover on foot and in a more intimate way the gardens, squares, and architecture metamorphosed by different artistic proposals. I imagined a dreamlike and surreal universe where all creative delusions are possible. End quote. You should also note that this year marks the 20th anniversary of our beloved Nuit Blanche, but this may be her last. In the fall, that is. Next year, she's moving to June. There are over 200 artistic events planned for this evening. The city of Paris has divided the city into three, with three separate sections for you to explore. Paris Nord, Paris Centre, and Paris Sud. There is so much to discover on a night like this, and I won't take away that thrill from you, but I did want to point out four bizarre, and I mean that in a good way, installations that might be worth a visit. Let's start with something simple, like... An island. An island of foam. That's right. The facade and forecourt of the Pompidou Center will be covered in a colorful foam, as created by the German artist Stephanie Luning. This thick foam will pour out of the museum's air vents, using the Beaubourg Piazza as a canvas for its random compositions a veritable series of performative and ephemeral installations which, descending the slope of the square, modifies the landscape and desecrates it with its colors. The dyes used are natural, so you can touch it, but it can, quote, cause temporary discoloration of clothing and skin, which is fun. Performances last about an hour and are scheduled at 7, 8.30, 10, and 11.30 p.m. After swimming in colorful foam, you'll probably want a bath. But would you settle for a piscine? Head to the Moritor swimming pool for a psychedelic music and light show and a huge swing across the pool. The American artist Annie Sperling has reinterpreted Bosch's Garden of Earthly Delights with the medieval imagery of the triptych remixed into a liquid light show with a 70s aesthetic. As soft colors sweep the space to the rhythm of rock and psychedelic music by Mason Rothschild, the swimming pool plunges into Phantasmagoria. A figure of neo-burlesque, Kitten Deville, enters this fantastic universe from her extra-large swing, moored at the edge of the Molitor swimming pool. Performances will run from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. If a kitten on a swing has whet your appetite for burlesque, Head to the Théâtre du Châtelet, where the American cabaret New Burlesque Troupe will offer several stripping performances, a discipline as sparkling as it is committed, they say. In total, five creatures flirt with taboos but always with great elegance, through a series of numbers punctuated by the mistress of ceremonies, Kitten on the Keys. This troupe may sound familiar since they were showcased in the Mathieu Almeric film Tournée, presented at the Cannes Film Festival in 2010. 
Performances are every hour on the hour from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. and last around 25 minutes. And last, but certainly not least, let's head back outside for some purple rain. Literally. Created by French artist Pierre Arduvin in reference to Prince's song, this purple rain consists of an artificial rain turned purple by huge spotlights under which visitors will walk around with umbrellas to a musical backdrop. This installation will run from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. at the Académie du Climat. As always, all performances for La Nuit Blanche are free to attend, and more information, including recommended pathways, can be found at paris.fr. Well, that's it for this week's roundup of Don't Miss This. For more great content, including a look behind the scenes, videos from Paris, a book club, and exclusive events, please join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Paris Underground Radio. If you enjoyed this roundup, please tell a friend. If you venture out to any of the events mentioned in this podcast, please let me know and tag Paris Underground Radio on Facebook or Instagram. And if you think you have an event we should know about, please feel free to email me at hello at parisundergroundradio.com with the subject line, don't miss this. I'm your host, Jennifer Garrity. You can find me on all socials at Jenny Foria. That's J-E-N-N-Y-P-H-O-R-I-A. Don't Miss This is produced by me for Paris Underground Radio. For more on Don't Miss This and shows like it, please visit parisundergroundradio.com. Thank you so much for listening and happy exploring. Don't Miss This is produced by Jennifer Garrity for Paris Underground Radio. For more on this show and shows like it, please go to parisundergroundradio.com.